Sean Gerty once said, the technology you use impresses no one. The experience you create with it is everything. Keep this in mind as we discuss today China's 6G technology and how it plans on launching commercially by 2030. My name is Dr. David Waradu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. David, do you know two of our subscribers made some suggestions to us? Uh, One said, you guys ought to have 70,000 subscribers. You mean 70 million. And the other said 70 million. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. So, well, one of them says over, this channel deserves to have over a 70 million subscribers. But wouldn't it be nice to have that? If you have not subscribed, help us out. Subscribe now. Exactly. So we'll also take this opportunity to thank our Patreon members uh, for their continued support. And for you, if you like our videos, consider subscribing to our Patreon membership. Thank you very much for your support. You know, the topic of the day is 6G. Most of the world right now is not even experiencing the benefits of 5G. That's correct. And geopolitically, the race is on to 6G and... What we see is that in the telecommunications industry, 6G race is heating up substantially mm-hmm. for, com- for companies, for governments. The stakes could not be higher because whoever gets the 6G patents first is pretty well going to own that whole segment of, of it. So here's the thing. The next industrial revolution, that is 6G, is now upon us. You're right, uh, Ross. As a matter of fact, all this stems from a white paper that was released uh, recently. As a matter of fact, Huawei was part of that white paper. I had a chance to read it, what's in it, and where China is planning to go forward with this technology. It's not for tomorrow. It's not for next year. This is for 2030. Well, it makes perfect sense because by 2030 or 2035 or even 2040, We're going to be living in a different setting than what it is today with AI, artificial intelligence, being part of every daily activity. All the way from driving to your devices to you name it, probably 6G is going to be involved. Exactly. And that is what China has been involved in. Now, mind you that this is not new. China has been working on this for quite a while. Well, at least since 2019. Yeah. Well, the 2019, that was when they officially asked the telecommunication companies, ZTE, I believe, and Uni, uh, there's one name of the company that is involved in in, in this technology to start conduct some uh, uh, R&D and for them to start working on, you know, putting the framework for what this 6G technology is going to be involved in. And now start to make more sense as to why China is going that way. Well, it's going that way because they want to achieve independence, as you said, from anything that is patented by Western uh, uh, corporations. They want, to, they want to own it all themselves and not have to consider the patents of other countries exactly. or other companies. Well, they did that even in space by having their own space station. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> so I don't see them, uh, I don't see why not they will not do this with 6G. The interesting aspect of this is that for China, they didn't have any gap between 3G and 5G. Now, it was a very smooth transition. Exactly. 3G, 4G, 5G. Their equipment supports the transition even into 6G. Yeah. They're really playing well, ahead. Well, it was only one challenge in the 5G. There were some shortcomings. Oh, for sure. That. Yeah. However, they want now for 6G not to have that at all, which means they have to, they wanted to have a complete independence on that. So, and this is where, if you recall, Ross, uh, for when we did our video about 
microchips. Oh, yes. This is where, uh, where it's coming. What I found very interesting, I'd like to share with you, is that the application of 6G, oh. where it's going to be. So, and we're going to share with our viewers some of this. So, there are about uh, eight business applications that this uh, technology is going to be involved in. One of them has to do with immersive cloud XR. Second one has to do with holographic communication. Oh, is that going to be impressive? It is indeed. Then sensory interconnection, intelligence interactive communication, digital twins, and global coverage. You know, all this, you know, the immersive uh, 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 services and so forth, you know, will be useful in a medical field and healthcare industry. That's I mean, this impressive. stuff is so impressive. Let me just shock everyone with sure. some facts here. 6G. You can download one hundredth of everything that's on Netflix, which yeah. is a lot. Yeah, one hundred. In one second. Yeah, one hundred hours of Netflix content. In one second. In one second. <laughs> that tells you right there the the power and the speed. With 6G, six, 10 times the number of devices that you can control through 6G. That's correct, yeah. And it's 100 times more reliable. <laughs> well, that, because that tells you right there, this technology will depend so much on far advanced uh, uh, research that's going to, which what China is doing on right now. So my argument with all this, in, in, in a good way, of course, is the applications will not only be involved into the business sector, because now you will be able to do, for example, uh, uh, calculations as far as investments. Oh, yeah. Conducting zillions of, uh, of, of, of calculations in a second. So you can just see this for forecasting, for example. So in the business sector, in the health industry, in telecommunications, but also you could see it in the military applications as well. It's almost, it's almost shocking what the implications of that are because 6G technology mm -hmm. is gonna make everything that's running on four or five terribly obsolete and militarily vulnerable. Exactly, and this is why China right now, uh, this research and development is going on. Right now, some experiments have been conducted on terahertz waves yeah. to see the application of this. So uh, the advantage that China has, China has the equipment and the technology to do that. And unfortunately, there's a country that's a competitor of China that doesn't have that. It's the United States. That's correct. Now, for us, we are fast in information technology. Yes. But we lack into the equipment. And, the, and, the, and, and that in itself uh, stems from why. Uh, because here's the thing. China's launching into 6G uh, it was in 2019 as far as the conversation and the research and so forth. They were already ahead of the United States. So now the U.S. is almost like uh, if you might want to use the term catching up. And you know, the, many uh, really well-informed analysts around the world are saying that the United States is very unlikely to catch up. That's correct. Well, it's because of how this fast technology is going. As a matter of fact, I did find out uh, uh, in October, I did find out one of the research I conducted about this aspects of technology that in October 21, uh, which is just this year. Yeah. Uh, in the U.S., they had about uh, the what they call the Alliance for Telecommunication Industry Solutions, which basically a group of uh, AT&T, uh, 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 Qualcomm, uh, Google, and there's the fourth one uh, that is uh, Apple. And they launched what they call the, the G Alliance. But even with that, the U.S. lacking equipment into this. And given how China, as you always say, produces one million new scientists and engineers every year. Yeah. So, so China is allocating major research and developments into this field. And the fact that they've got a space station up and they're on Mars tells you how rapidly they can, they can bring something into reality once they set their mind to it. Yeah. Well, especially for the research uh, 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 station that they're going to have on the moon uh, in conjunction with Russia. 
You know, as oh, yeah. you know, Russia has an experience, former Soviet Union, uh, has an experience when it comes down to space. Uh, China, even though it's considered a newcomer into the space, they've achieved so much in such a short period. So, you know, one way of looking at it is China's a newcomer in all kinds of things, except having a rich history. Exactly. And that's going to come to play, uh, that's going to come into play as far as uh, the 6G developments. This is why they are working on it. As I said earlier, this is not for next year. This is not for the following year. This is, they want to have everything set up by 2030. You're looking at about nine to eight years from today. And it's going to go by fast and they're going to achieve those. But to China, this is a long term. It is long term. And also to achieve the complete, and I use the term, complete independence from anything the Western world uh, uh, produces or controls. Well, there certainly won't be very many claims of China stealing technology. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we've always heard that claim before, but this is now they put in the time and energy into how they're going to develop all this. And this white paper is sort of almost uh, uh, an indication of what lies ahead. I'm, I was even surprised that they released uh, uh, but, but usually white papers, that's what white papers are all about. It's almost a blueprint for what lies ahead. So was it a China's way of communicating with the rest of the world as far as here is what we're planning on doing? Uh, and, and could it be that other countries need to read between the lines? Well, they, they said oh. it's, that white paper said it in such a straightforward way. There's, there's no reading between the lines. Exactly. And said, that's here it. it is. Yeah. And we're going to beat the pants off you. Yeah, because <laughs> China's not going to worry about what other countries are doing. Uh, they're moving forward with their. They want to uh, achieve a self-sufficient uh, production of technology within their own country. And they can share it with whomever they want. That becomes theirs. They can do whatever they want. So... There was, uh, and yes, the two companies, the Chinese is Unicom and ZT. Those are the ones that they are, as of today, working on this R&D, the research and development, uh, sanctioned by the Chinese government in support of, of the Chinese government. And, and they are planning on doing all this. So that's where I, we see it going. You know, forward. there's a conclusion or bottom line here. Yeah. The next industrial revolution is on. 6G will soon dominate telecommunications. China is favored to be the big winner here. The race is on. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We certainly appreciate you. And as always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye-bye.